You know how sometimes you're driving along in the car, you see something out the window and think, that'll make an amazing picture, and you find a car park, you rush around, you come back with your camera, you take a few pictures, and they're not quite what you'd expected. Having a brilliant subject to photograph isn't all it takes. You also have to think about how you're going to photograph it, as well as lighting and things like that. These sculptures are brilliant, aren't they? I mean, I love the curviness of them. I just like the whole, everything about them. I think they're absolutely bloody brilliant. Sorry, shouldn't swear. Um, but look what a messy place this is. We've got traffic lights and cars, we've got building sites. But I particularly love this office building over here and the blue sky above it. You can't see a blue sky because Jane has had to expose for me and I'm in shade. Trust me, there is a blue sky. If she exposed for the sky, you wouldn't see me. I'd be a silhouette. Three years ago, I came down here and I photographed these sculptures for our beginners downloadable course, Digital Photography Exposed. Because I really wanted to sort of show people how to separate the wheat from the chaff, how to find the image in a cluttered environment. So let's just go through that. Let's just go through what I did back then. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is to walk about. Come on, let's go and have a wander around. Look at things. Just look at them. Think about them for a minute. Think differently. Just kind of take a moment. Don't just go mad with a camera. Don't be afraid to sort of bend your legs and start looking at things from weird angles. I know people might turn around and stare at you, but so what? You know, it's like, are they taking a picture or are you? So that's quite interesting. Another little tip is to get your eye in close to something and just kind of look at it from a totally different, I keep looking over there because I don't know where the camera is, a different point of view. I actually quite like this. Just by getting my wide lens in really close to that, I ought actually, even though it's a bit cluttered, you know what, I kind of like it. Hmm, but that's not what I meant to do. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Also, you need to know how your lenses work. Go and check out our lenses films because different lenses portray things differently. I know that I need about 12 to 14 millimeter lens to get the shot that I want. And that is the curviness of the sculpture over the cubiness of the office block. Now then, by bending my legs a bit, checking the composition, I don't want that lamppost sticking up in the shot either. By bending my legs, Checking the composition, just zoom in and out a little. No, I don't want to zoom in and out, sorry, move in and out a little until I, there it is, there. I've got the building and I've got the sculpture. But because it's three years later, I've got something else. Trees, they were about five feet shorter the last time I came here. It's still a nice image though. If you do revisit a location you've been to before, but things have changed, like the trees have grown up or there's another building, don't give up, just keep walking around. Just when we were walking around the back there, I realised what a great shot Jane had at the opening of the film. It's so simple, just to take this curvy shape and put it smack against the blue sky. Now, that's part of it. There's something else I want to show you, and that is the thought process behind a picture. So I'm just going to show you how I thought out one of my favourite images. A couple of years ago, I came down here one cold, frosty morning and took one of my favourite pictures ever. This one. Two little boats sitting quietly on the water with their reflections. Now, the reason we've come back here is because I want to take you through the thought process that went behind taking that picture. Lots of people are quite surprised when, they, when I tell them that even though I'm a professional, I don't just walk around and go, click, award-winning picture, click, award-winning picture. I actually have to put a bit of work into it myself. Now, it's different for everybody, but I came down here and saw these two little boats. I took this shot, a wide-angle shot. Now, you can just see kind of, there they are, sitting in the middle of this sort of little estuaryette. And there's obviously potential there. Now, the light's completely different because I was here early in the morning, and one very obvious other difference is that there wasn't the large white boat there. If you're really picky, there are two grey boats, whereas actually in my shot there's a red and a grey, but please don't get picky about those details. What I want to do is take you through the process. So I've got a wide angle shot with my two little boats sitting in the middle. Yes, it's kind of pleasant, but it's a little bit dull, isn't it? So then I tried putting them onto a third by using the rule of thirds, and again it's still not that exciting got in close. Another shot. It's still really not doing it. So 
my next thought was, well, I wonder what they look like from the other side, over there. As you can see, as I walk towards you, the sun's now behind me, even though it's gone in compared to when we were over there. When I was down here that first time, the sun was over there. It had just come over the horizon at dawn. And these little boats were being lit from over there. Now, as you can, I'm going to take the shot again, but as you can see from the original picture, it's really rather dull, isn't it? because they're lost in the background. There's the red light against the red bank and it's all a bit, oh dear, that really doesn't work. I was better off on the other side. So that leaves the final option of going up here on the bridge. So this is gonna give me a completely different perspective, a different view. So I'm looking down at the boats bow on. Never be afraid to spend time walking round your shop and thinking about it and considering it. I know if you go for a walk with your family or your husband or your wife or a friend, you're gonna drive them completely around the bend. This is why most professional photographers, especially landscape photographers, tend to be solitary sort of people who enjoy their own company rather a lot, just like me. Um, so looking down here at the boats, I then was thinking, now that looks so much nicer because we've got the light coming from the horizon off to the right and it's kind of washing this warm, ready glow across the bow of the boats. So, lining up the shot here, and I'm gonna take the same shot again, actually, with the boats at the bottom of the frame. It's okay, we've got a nice reflection. And we've got the light coming in from the side, but there's still, for me, there was something missing. And I honestly kid you not, that I must have stood here for, well, I don't know, a good 10 minutes or so, before it dawned on me that something as ridiculously simple as tilting my camera down a bit from that position, which has the boats at the bottom, to that position, which puts them at the top. That's all it is, a movement from there to there. And suddenly you've got this really quiet, peaceful picture of two little boats with their reflections on a lovely, lovely sunny early morning. Few people who've seen this shot have said to me, but don't you think it looks a bit spooky because the sky is at the bottom and the boats are at the top? Well, actually, I kind of like it that way, but it does kind of work if you flip it up the other way. So you've got the reflection of the boat as the top of the boat. Now, the reason I brought you down here is I really wanted you to get the hang of this whole thought process, this moving around and looking at different things and trying different angles. I'm not that experienced with landscapes. I love shooting landscapes and have done it for a long time, but it's not my specialist field. Documentary life, people on the run. Yeah, then I can probably just see something or even hear something and know what to do. It all comes with experience and practice, and it's really important that you do get out and experience and practice. I also know I keep banging on about not being lazy and I'm sorry if I appear rude but so many people just stand there and go click and then are disappointed. You need to move around, get on the move, try things out. So not only is it good for something decorative to put on your wall, it's good for your figure too. Look at mine. <laughs>